we just didn't have that, but that affected some of the things yesterday. Lots going on, but BBS is big, big thing this week. Uh, we have a call to worship today. Uh, this will probably be our call to worship this week and next week. Uh, it is good to give thanks to the Lord our God. To declare your loving kindness in the morning. And your faithfulness every night. And that, those verses come from Psalm 92. And, and especially focusing on the Lord's faithfulness. Now kind of flipping to our side. Give us wisdom and strength, Lord. Forgive us and restore us. We worship and praise you, O Lord God. You forgive, you heal, you redeem, and you restore. Those are four powerful words right there. Forgive, heal, redeem, and restore. And that is the God that we worship and serve who does those things in our life. And every one of us need those things. Just constantly, repeatedly, and God is faithful. Thank you, Lord. We come to a time where we go to the Lord in prayer, so let us... Let us let us pray. Lord, we come before you today, a people knowing how desperately we need you. Father God, Lord, we know that Jesus said that we are to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Father God, guide us in understanding the magnitude of that and what that means for us in our lives. Father God, deliver us from just religious activity and motions or going through the motions or checking the boxes. Lord, lead us to a greater understanding of what it means to be modern day fully devoted disciples of Jesus today. Father God, help us to, to have that desire in our hearts that we would want to be fully devoted disciples of Jesus. And then we're going to boldly pray even beyond that, that you would lead us as disciples of Jesus to be involved in helping make disciples. Father God, even this week, BBS is so important in trying to help our children gain knowledge of the biblical stories, Father God. I pray for Dawn this week as she's our storyteller this week. And that's such an important role. But just everything to talk about the heroes of the Bible, Father God. And then we would pray, too, that our children, Lord, would, would not think that these are just people of the past or they're really cool stories. But to know that they're cool stories because these people were in relationship with you and you were doing your work in them and through them. And to know, Lord, that you can work in our lives. You can work through us, Father God. Today, we would be so bold as to say, touch us with your transforming power so that we in turn can touch others with that same transforming power, Father God. Lord, we live in a world that desperately needs you. We desperately need you, Father God. So we come to worship you today. We come to give you praise. And Lord, you inhabit the praises of your people. We know that you're here with us. Lord, I pray for the truth of your word, the power of your word to go forth. I humbly ask that, Father God, and pray for anointing you know, to bring the word today, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you for each person here, Father. Lord, we lift up our nation. Certainly, we just see the turmoil. We see the confusion in our nation, and we know how desperately our nation needs revival and renewal. Father God, I thank you for that movie, The Jesus Revolution, that recently came out. Let that stir our faith for a new move of God in these days, in this hour, Father God. Help us to know that revival follows prayer, Lord, and help us be growing in our prayer lives, Father God, day by day as disciples of Jesus. Lord, you know the, the physical needs in the body. Uh, Lord, and too, like also just situations with parents uh, that are on our hearts and on our minds. There's several of those in these days, Lord. And so, Father, you know our lives, you know our names, you know our stories. And Father God, you are at work in this place. You are at work in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your strength, your wisdom. We need you in these days. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And now we're going to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. But I, I really hope that that phrase, thy kingdom come, your will be done will really grasp our hearts today and in these coming days. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Let's stand to give our praise to God today. What are you doing?
we believe. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Jireh, the Lord our provider, and you are enough for all that you've done through us, for us in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are enough. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Thanks be to God. Amen. Last Sunday, we sang that song early as kind of called worship and talked about the names of God, Jehovah Jireh, also Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. I mentioned there's a book by Tony Evans. There's several books by him along these lines, but one is praying through the names of God. And man, that is really amazing. And then there's another that relates to that called the power of the names of God. And uh, <clears throat> I use those in my devotionals. And interesting today, 
uh, the the name for the day for me today, Jehovah Sitkanu, uh, which means Jehovah our righteousness. And uh, wow, too, like kind of refiner's fire in that, which is interesting in light of the scripture I have today. So praying for God to be with us and us to know him in the fullness of who he is, and that is eternal life. So thankful. Are we, are we online and up and running today okay? All right. We've had some challenges in recent days with the streaming. We're trying to work on some things on that. Pray for us that God will guide us in those decisions because there's lots of people that join our church through online, and uh, we're thankful for that, and we welcome you for watching online. We don't pass offering plates here. We have a basket in the back if you would like to give. Also, you can give online. We pray just for God's finances for our church through the summer. There's multiple things going on. Certainly, we're praying for our youth and our children going to summer camp. I've done a budget around 25 to 30 kids and counselors going, and it's pretty intense. And at the bingo thing the other Sunday night, 24 kids went forward that they were going to summer camp, and I know there were five or six that weren't there, and then we have to cover the counselors on top of that, so I'm like, you know, you sit there and everybody's clapping, going, praise God, and I'm going, oh, help us, Jesus, you know, uh, Jaira, you know, uh, sing the song, uh, and trust in God, and I do believe he will. Backpack program is on the horizon. You know, this past year, Dean was thinking it was going to be sixteen to 18000 It ended up, it was $23,000 for the year last year and so we're gearing up you know to go into this coming year and i mean that was just because the food prices just exploded on everything over the course of the year as well as taking on some additional children you know for feeding them with the backpack ministry so we're looking forward to that we also within our own body right now we have some needs uh we work out of a missions account that's in special funds it doesn't have any real way for money to be put in there so it's real interesting we've had some needs within our body that we're trying to take care of out of that so pray for us uh in that as well so uh god is our provider and in gyra we claim those names and we walk by faith and we trust him uh and just for our budget for this year as well thanks be to god amen if we had time, we'd stand and sing the doxology, but just sing it in your mind. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Hallelujah. That was good, quick, good job. Sounded better if we all sang it, but hallelujah. Uh, I, often, I often say, and I know you don't get it, but if you could watch the journey of a sermon coming together over a week, it's always, to me, quite an adventure. And I've actually usually enjoyed this that adventure but this week has been brutal for this message. And some of that is just because within my own self, God has been working this into me. And then also it's connected with some interesting things that have happened just in my life and ministry and seeing where the church, the church is today. Uh, it's quite interesting. We're going to go into the Gospel of John. We're going to read in chapter 21. We're going to read verses 1 through 19. One of the days uh, when I was working on this, Debbie was in the other room, and I'm like reading this, and I'm going, man, Debbie, you, you could just preach us like a four to six week series just on these like verses, and I may do that at some point. There are two sermons that always really jump out at me in these, and I was planning on kind of going one way, and the Lord kept wanting to take me back. And so the key of this sermon this week has been the wrestling match between Bud and God. And I'm still not sure who won, which that's weird, isn't it? I mean to say, but, but, wow, that's why you need to be praying today for me preaching and praying for you hearing. And that's one of the key things is praying for anointing for the preacher as he prepares Pray for anointing for the preacher as he preaches and then pray for anointing for yourself and the body as they hear because the dynamics of all of that are incredible. Okay. And especially when God is flowing and God is working and that's what we're praying for today. Are you with me church? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias. 
And in this way, he showed himself. And I want you to know there's some kind of mysterious stuff in all of this. And again, one of the sermons could just be looking at kind of the mysterious stuff and how this plays out. And, and some of it's kind of hard to understand. And then around verse 10 or 11, it starts getting more concrete and specific. But, but we're reading all this uh, to get it out there. Okay. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. You know, a lot of times there's nothing wrong with doing certain things. But there's other times when it's exactly the wrong thing. We know that Peter denied Jesus three times, right? That stands as a backdrop to this story. But I want you to know that there's a subtle way right here that Peter denies Jesus right here in a subtle way, a way that we deny Jesus a million times when Peter said, I'm going fishing. And then if you want to know the scary part of this, all the disciples are like, I, I wish Mike Grigsby was here because we had a study. We talked about this at Bible study and Mike is an awesome dude and it's kind of scary because we're alike. But uh, Mike goes, doo -doo 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 -doo. You know, like all the disciples just go following Peter like, Peter, I'm going fishing. So, doo -doo -doo -doo. Here go all the disciples following Peter. And, and it's not time to go fishing. Hello. And I want you to know the church today, we're doing a million things. We're going to football games, baseball games, basketball games, volleyball games. We're going to movies. We're going here, there, and everywhere. And we need to just maybe sometimes stop and think, what is it time to do? And in this moment, it was not time to go fishing. And they said to him, we're going with you also. This is going to be a challenge for me jumping back and forth here, helping Jesus. They said to him, we're going with you also. And they went out and immediately got into the boat. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? <laughs> and they caught nothing. You know, we run around doing all our stuff, and a lot of times when it's all said and done and we get done, you know where we're at? Nada, nothing. But when morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? Just to rub it in. And they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. I got a feeling it's starting to sound a little familiar. You know what I mean? So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of the fish. Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, all during the Gospel of John, John likes to refer to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And most of the time, it's when he's around Peter. <laughs> and, and this one's kind of funny. Like, you know, Peter's not smart enough to get it. So the disciple whom Jesus loved figured it out and explained it to Peter because he was too slow to figure it out. Which he really wasn't probably, but he's writing, so he gets to say what he wants to say, okay? And he says... And so the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, because you're so stupid you can't figure it out, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, do you, do you notice in, in, this, in these verses, one of the things, there's tons of stuff that, that, that a lot of times it's called him Simon Peter now, like most of the time it's been Peter, but now it's going Simon Peter, and that's preparing you for what's coming when Jesus starts talking to him, Okay. So Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, like he hadn't figured it out. So he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and he plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. 
Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. So Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to the land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. And Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet some of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord, Jesus then came and took bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Now, here we are at verse 15, and the attention turns to Simon. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, but he said to Simon Peter, he said, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? This is going to be our verse today right here. And I have fought this severely (laughs) because I had a different sermon I wanted to preach. And the Lord wouldn't let me go. Simon, put your name right there. Do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. So so many times as Christians, we kind of know the story. Peter has denied Jesus three times, right? Really almost a fourth time when he said, let's go fishing. So how many times is Jesus going to ask him, Peter, do you love me? Three and it's, it's like a restoration. God healed. God forgives. He heals. He redeems. He restores. And that's what's taking place between Jesus and Simon. Simon Peter. Peter. That's, what hap- that's what's happening is Jesus is, is restoring him. And yet, yet somehow even in that, it it's really seems that it's painful to Simon Peter. And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. But then Jesus said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Tend my sheep. But then Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved, and maybe that's because he realized what was going on. The, the restoration the, the, the three times because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, you were the younger. You girded yourself and walked where you wished when you were younger. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will, get, will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death Peter would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. One other thing I want to say to you today that I want you to hear is Jesus saying to you and to me today, follow me. He didn't say go to church. He didn't try to say, be good people. He said, say it with me, follow me. And that's what we're supposed to be about. As Christians, as followers of Jesus, as the church today, what does it look like for us to follow Jesus? And when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? There's two brothers, they're called the Kendrick brothers, and they have made numerous Christian movies. And they help take Christian movies in our day to a whole new level, okay? From Fireproof to uh, War Room to Overcomer, but one of those was a movie called Courageous, okay? And in the movie Courageous, it starts out where a man is at the gas station and he gets out and he's filling his truck with gas and then he realizes he needs to go in the store and he goes into the store of the gas station and as he does two guys jump in his truck 
and start to drive off. And he runs out to, of the store and he grabs hold of the mirror on the driver's side and he puts his, the windows down and he's holding on and he's fighting the driver for control of the truck and trying to get him. And his life is in peril as the truck swings around and, and all this stuff happens until finally the truck comes to a stop and, and, and it's not the safest stop, but a stop. And you're like, man, that's kind of crazy. I know it's a nice truck, but, but when it comes to a stop, all of a sudden the camera goes into the back seat and his little three-year-old boy is in the back seat. Hello? So he wasn't going to be denied. He was hanging on. He was risking his life because his three-year-old was in the back seat and he wasn't letting those guys drive off with his three-year-old son. And so the police come to the scene and the guys are arrested and all gets worked out and the two police officers are driving off and one of the police officers looks to the other and said, hey, if your son was in the back seat like that, do you think you would have risked your life like that to save him like he did? And the police officer goes, man, I'm not sure, but I, I sure hope so. I hope that's what I would do. And the other one goes, man, me too. I don't know, but I, I hope that's what I would do. And they go on. Well, that night, one of those police officers has gotten home, and he's just sat down watching TV for the evening, and his teenage son walks in and says, hey, Dad, will you go running with me? Oh, son, I'm just too tired you know, today. It's been a long day. And then the, just the, de the dejection on the teenage son face. And you just kind of feel like this is a pattern. You know what I mean? Are you with me, church? Because we want to talk about the heroic act. You know, oh, I would, I would hold on. I would fight for his life. I wouldn't let them drive away. You know, oh, man, I love my son. I would do anything for my son. Hey, Dad, will you go run with me? I'm just too tired, son. Not tonight. And the way it played out, you just got the feel that this was the pattern. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Church, do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength? And here on Sunday morning, yes, Lord, yes, Pastor Bud, we love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. How about prayer on Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock? Oh, man, I'm just not really a morning person. Well, doesn't being a disciple of Jesus mean being like Jesus? Well, yeah. Well, Jesus arose a great while before the day. I mean, before seven. How about we have it at four if you're busy at seven? If you want to pray, tell me the time. I'll meet you here. But we say we love him with all of our heart. Roger, watch the comments, brother. <laughs> No, man, I'm, I'm kidding. I would just love to hear the commentary sometimes. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. All right. Uh, no, <laughs> this is going to be a hard sermon to preach. So, man, I didn't want to preach it, but help him, Jesus. That's where I'm going, okay? But because we, we say, don't we in our hearts, we say, oh, yeah, I love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we're like, yes. And then all of a sudden, the little things come along, and, and we're not so sure about that little thing, or we're not so sure about this little thing. And, and, and we still, we love him with all our heart, but, but in the daily walking out of it, then the Lord comes to us, and he calls us by name. And he says, do you love me more than these? I want to ask you today, and this is, where you, this is where we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit, not only on my preaching, but on your hearing. What are your these? Hello? Hello? 
because it's always speculated. People talk about when Peter, when God looked at Simon, Simon Peter, Peter, and said, do you love me more than these? He wasn't talking about the other disciples and saying, do you love me more than these other guys? No, Simon Peter had gone back to what was comfortable. He had gone back to what he knew. He had gone back to his comfort zone to go fishing. Because this following Jesus thing is getting weird. I don't understand it. I, I mean, I'm all for Jesus. I love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. But he just got crucified. He's died. I can't figure it out. We're, we're, I mean, like, is he risen? Is he not risen? What does he want us to do? I don't know. I'm going fishing. What are our these? What are your these that we just tend to go back to? It's what we drift toward. It's what we go to. It's what we know. And I want to tell you, that's what keeps us from following Jesus in the fullness of following Jesus. Hello, church. One of the reasons why I didn't want to preach this is because I'm a planner. I like to plan. I like when we go on trips. I like planning a trip. I had a bad day for numerous reasons yesterday, but one of them is because I've lost a folder. Debbie and I have a trip planned for the end of August, and I had laid some things out, begun the budget, began looking at what we might do, and I can't find that folder. And that makes me mad because I try to keep organized at some level in all my stacks and piles. There's organization. Don't believe me, there is. But, but sometimes there's not, and then that makes me mad because it made me look like there's not, okay? Uh, so I couldn't find that. That was just one thing because I have plans. And so, so, like, I love when God, I, don't, I even like it when he reveals his plan, and then, like, I can make it my plan. But a lot of times he's just like, follow me. And I'm like, okay, so what's the plan? Follow me. No, I mean, like, yeah, I get that, but what's the plan? Uh, no, I need you to just follow me. I'll tell you when you need to know. You're on a need-to-know basis, and right now you don't need to know. And I'm like, dude, I'm, that, uh, I'm going to go watch sports. See who wins. Debbie's like, you don't even like TCU. Why are you watching them? It's because I'm really ticked about some other things right now, so I'm going to cheer for TCU, God Almighty. <laughs> They're a Texas team. Let a Texas team make it into the College World Series. These. What are your these? I wish. Suzanne, I hope you're watching online. And because you're not here, I'm talking about you. We're going to talk about, is it QVC? Shopping Network? Suzanne, just because you're not here, we're going to talk about QVC. Helper Jesus. Because I know, you know, when you get to know somebody, you start knowing what their these are, isn't it? Right, 31? Huh? Yes, sir. All right. I want to tell you, God knows what your these are. And today, He's asking you, do you love me more than these? Do you know that can be your family? You know, there can be some really awesome things that you put before the Lord. Your family. I think there's probably times, Debbie and I, that was something that, a core value that we had is we wanted to be Christian parents raising our family. We loved raising our kids, our family. But I'll tell you, for a lot of us, it's our comfort. Whatever our comfort is, whatever our comfort is, that can be our these. Whatever our comfort is, our security, we like to be secure, and so many times Jesus calls us out of our security. Doing the uh, testimony at Marley. You were a little out of your comfort zone on that one, weren't you? Huh? Yes. Sir. Yes. But you did it, didn't you? And it sounded like they really supported you and they were right with you and that you felt the the or anointing of God and the presence of God in the room. And we're so proud of you for going and doing that and rep repping Jesus well there in that. But out of your comfort zone just a little bit, huh? A lot of it. A lot of it. But glory to God. And so many times we fight for our comfort zone. 
And it's what these are. Let me just tell you today, you know, we don't think we have idols today because because like there's no altars that we're going to, so to speak. There's no totem poles or, you know, we don't go to some worship service necessarily except sports. I want to tell you, sports are our idols today for so much of America. Anything that would lead a grown man to wear a Speedo and paint his body or like put a pig nose on his face and go to a game, or you can just keep going in the weirdness, and you're like, wow, your wife lets you out of the house like that. I'm not sure she's going to let you back in, so enjoy the game, bro. <laughs> Can't you just see somebody going, yeah, that's my dad, that's my granddad, woo! <laughs> nope, don't know him. Isn't that your granddad? Nope, don't know him. <laughs> there, was a young, there was a young couple... Uh, at, at, at one of my churches a while back, they had season tickets to UT, and 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 everything in their life revolved around when UT was playing. And I mean, they, UT is playing; they're not going to be there. And we've seen, you know, like we we want church, man. Let church be over in an hour, and over an hour and ten minutes. I guess we get up to an hour and fifteen sometimes. Help us, Jesus. But you know, uh, you know, but it better be over soon. But, but, you know, like now in college football games, tailgating is the thing, and let's make a day of it. Feel free to tailgate before the service next Sunday. It'll be great. We'll be out in the parking lot. We'll tailgate. And, you know, go Jesus, go Pastor Bud. Overtime. Yeah! <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you ever, do you ever, do you ever just, just get boggled your mind when you see a sports person's contract? You know, I'm a, I'm an NBA fan, and this past year there's this guy. He was he was going to be like number five on the team, like you know number maybe number six, and he signed a two year, sixty four million dollar contract. Man, sign me up. You know, like I can scrub out for sixty four million, thirty two mil a year. You know. A few years back, it's been a few years back, but a guy declined a $15 million contract. He was fading in his career. He had tried to choke the coach. He should have been arrested for assault and attempted murder. Honest to God, he had tried to choke the coach. I mean, he had... And then, then he was offered a $15 million contract. And he said, I can't sign for that because I got to feed my family. Let me try to feed my family for $15 million. We might figure out how to get by. His yacht got repossessed the next year. That was rough. That was all. Oh, man, I was really sad for him. You know, so, so like, you know, pros are making all this money, so now what's the letters for college players now can make their millions? How much does a teacher get paid? But what, what didn't didn't I read about that teacher signing a two year sixty four million dollar deal? Didn't didn't that happen? Oh, maybe not, right? Yeah, that was the coach. But I'm just saying, like, man, we, we think we don't have, you know, and so so like, you know, like one of the battles for our families today is where they're at on Sunday, and, and the part of that is what we're teaching our children who our gods are on Sunday morning. Amen. Do you love me more than these? And so don't, don't think about other people's these. Oh man, all those other people's these, man, are so pathetic, you know. Uh, no. No. Let God help you understand what are your these. And then when Jesus brings it to a conclusion, Jesus says, what does he say to end? Follow me. I want you to know, church, that's right where we are today. 
for me, for every one of us in this room, God comes to us today and he says, do you love me more than these? And he knows what our these things are. And in the midst of that, he says, follow me. Tammy, will you play for just a minute? And, and we're just going to, we're going to sit before the Lord for a second and pray about our these. <laughs> And Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And I want you to know, I know, I know what my these are today. God's been telling me all week, so I want to preach something else. <laughs> but I pray for anointing for us to hear. We have a moment just to seek the Lord, to listen, let him remind us. What are these is are, maybe to lay them down and then pick up that idea that I want to be a disciple who follows Jesus today, a fully devoted disciple, partnering with God and making fully devoted disciples. Let's just take a moment and seek the Lord, wait on him in Jesus name.
don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done. I'm fighting a battle. Just a minute. Can you go back to the call to worship? Is that possible to do that? When we did that, I kind of knew where we were going. Maybe you didn't. And in light of that, we'll see if we can go back to that. First part's out of Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord our God. And praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning. And your faithfulness every night. He is faithful. Give us wisdom and strength, Lord. In times of trouble. Forgive us and restore us when we deny you through our thoughts, words, and actions. We worship and praise you, O Lord God, because you forgive, you heal, you redeem, and you restore. And that's a glorious thing. That's where he meets us today is right in that place. Now we'll go to Parliament of Blessing. Take a moment here today and look around, see who's here. Maybe you think of who's not here that you want to call or let know. For those of you watching online, some watching right now, others that are going to watch later in the week, even if you're watching later in the week, you're a part of this. You're a part of our family of faith, and we love you. And, and we're grateful that you follow us up online the way that you do. Who are we we are Christ's family. And we have come to worship the Lord and to give Him praise 
Now we are sent by God to be fully devoted disciples of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. In Jesus' name, I do pray God will lead us by His Holy Spirit as we go forth to be His people in the world, partnering with God in transforming people into fully devoted disciples of Jesus for the glory of God. Lead us, Lord, by Your Spirit. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed as you go today. I'm fighting about.